Hello drummers and other creatures. Today we're going to take a look at a simple way to start developing your improvisation skills on the drum set. Uh, this is obviously an instrument where improvisation plays a fairly substantial part in how we play. We learn as much vocabulary as we can and then we apply that vocabulary to different styles and improvising and being comfortable with the idea of improvising is a really fairly major part of being able to play this instrument. And uh, especially in the beginning stages of the learning process, uh, people are a little bit reluctant to just improvise and so if that's you hopefully this video will be helpful and uh, this will give you an idea that you can start using straight away uh, that's fairly simple and hopefully you can have some fun with if you get stuck in. If you enjoy this video and you find it useful, make sure you give me the old thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to be notified of future stuff and also obviously to help the dastardly algorithm do its thing. And uh, if you find the concepts interesting and would like to go a bit more deeper into this or any other subject, be aware that I'm available to teach you directly one-on-one -on -one, and the details will be found in the description box below. So let's get stuck in. We're going to start off with some single strokes on the snare drum and we're going to play taps. That means I'm going to grab my sticks here and we're going to play some soft strokes on the snare and just try and get it flowing really nicely. In my mind I'm thinking about playing 16th notes which is 1e anna, 2e anna, 3e anna, 4e anna or you could count takadimi, 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 takadimi or just play some single strokes and don't think about the time too much just try and keep it nice and steady. You can still follow the exercise. Okay, so you just made sure that you can play some soft taps there. The next thing we're going to do is add some accents. And I'm going to assume this is a sort of uh, video targeting beginners. I'm going to assume that you may not be all that familiar with the terminology and what to do. Accents just means that we're going to play some notes louder than those taps. And to start with, we're going to play the accents with your dominant hand, in my case, the right. Okay, so we're just going to throw some louder notes in between the soft ones. You can play anything that comes to mind. I would start off doing really simple uh, patterns, so just play the odd note here and there even. And so on and so on. You could spend a little bit of time with that if you've never done this before and just work on it until you feel really comfortable with that right hand or your dominant hand playing some louder notes um, than the other notes that you're playing. Okay again you've got taps which are the soft notes and accents which are the louder notes. There is a whole uh, bunch of technical stuff you could get into about how to do the accents but for now we're just focusing on using our ears and using our body in whatever way we feel comfortable. Now, once you've worked on the dominant hand, um, you're going to do some accents with your non-dominant hand, in my case, the left, right? And the reason we're splitting this up is just to allow us to introduce our body to these strange new movements uh, and allow both of our limbs to get comfortable with the idea, okay? So it can be quite useful in lots of situations to give each limb a go at doing whatever thing you're trying to learn. So again, a few left hand accents. Now that the right hand and the left hand have been introduced to this idea, let's use both the right and left hands and play some patterns there. Again, 
make it really simple and I'm just giving you very quick little demonstrations but you could sit and do this for a good few minutes uh, until you start feeling a bit of a creative flow and uh, when we start doing patterns like this improvising sometimes the sound that we make is a bit boring and uninspiring but if you come back to doing it regularly or if you just stay with it for a long enough period of time I don't know you find that uh, musical sounds start coming out and you start to hear patterns that make sense and that sound good to you. Anything is good. Nice. Get stuck into that. Um, if you want to add a little bit more of a musical framework, you could sing a, a melody or a bass line to yourself. Uh, for some reason, I've got uh, Good Times by Chic in my head. So I could sing the bass line and then I could sort of improvise around the sound of that bass line, which uh, I'm going to start off by just playing out the rhythm uh, from the bass line and then I'm just going to freely improvise on it. So I'm not going to play all the notes from the bass line all the time, but you'll get the idea. I'm going to sort of dance around it a little bit. Okay, so we've got bomb, 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 ba da ba dum, bomb, 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 ba dum, bomb, bomb, ba da ba dum, bomb, ba dum. We can do that on a snare drum, we can do that on a practice pad as well, it's a good thing to practice anywhere you are, but you're just going to create any kind of rhythmic patterns that come out using the combination of accents and taps. You can do it on your thighs when you want. It's a great exercise to do. Mm, quite like the sound of that, to be honest. Okay, now, the next thing we're going to do once we're feeling comfortable playing the accents on the snare is we're going to play some of the accents on the toms and i've just got my two toms here you can use as many toms as you have on your drum set but uh, like, like ways i'm going to sort of slow things down or i'm going to make things simple rather and we're going to start off again with just the dominant hand the right hand in my case and we're going to play the floor tom and produce some accents with that okay so i'm going to go back to just playing taps on the snare and throw the occasional accent on the floor tom still doing some accents on the snare as well uh, if you find that too much you can just focus on the floor tom but once you start getting the hang of that then the right hand can play some accents on the high tom or if you've got a middle tom there as well or however many toms but you can try and use the other toms as well So on and so on until the right hand feels happy playing accents on the snare on the high tom on the middle tom on any tom next we're going to play some accents with the, the left hand or the non-dominant hand um, if you happen to be whichever blah you get the idea anyway we're going to play with the, the left hand just going to keep things simple we want to do this exercise in a way that it, it's easy to get it flowing so you do the easiest thing that you can and then you can add a little complexity once you get used to it so I'm going to play left hand accents 
only on the high tom at the moment. Uh, you can, in due course, then cross over and play the floor tom with the left hand or play on the hi-hat as well if you like, but I'm, I'm really trying to keep things easy. So the left hand is gonna play the high tom uh, and then the right hand has access to the floor tom and the high tom too, as well as the snare, of course, okay? So left hand. Good. Now you're feeling comfortable. You can play right-handed accents, left-handed accents on the toms. You can play some accents on the snare. Again, the pattern that you play doesn't matter. Just play, just play around with it. Next, we're gonna play accents with both hands. Now, uh, whenever I introduce these sort of ideas to my students, they almost universally go for doing the most complicated thing they can think of doing straight away. And then uh, there's a bit of a tendency to get frustrated. So. I've said it before, I'll say it again, start off with some simple ideas and then increase the complexity as you feel uh, the ideas are getting easier to execute. Uh, and this way, you sort of avoid making yourself too frustrated. This is not a sport, we're not trying to win a triathlon here. We're just taking our time and relaxing and gradually developing our ability to make up some cool patterns, okay? So both hands on the top. I'm doing a very, very quick little demonstration. You could sit and do that for 10 minutes if you like. More and more ideas will come to you when you do. If you find any of this at all tricky, just stay on whichever stage you're getting stuck. Keep working on it until it feels comfortable. That's it. These things take time, that's all. Okay, now we're going to add some accents on the symbols. It uh, you know, gives us another texture to work with. We can create big crashy sounds, we can create some dingy sounds. You can use the symbol in whatever way you like. Play the bell, but just to keep things sort of simple and straightforward, I'm, I'm just gonna play crashes on my cymbals. Uh, but what we are gonna add to this is a bass drum stroke. So whenever we play the cymbal, we're gonna play the bass at the same time, just to give the sound a bit more oomph. What I recommend doing at this stage is then forgetting about the snare and the toms, but just very gently now getting yourself used to playing, again, dominant hand, right hand on the cymbal, get used to that, and then bring in the left hand a little bit, and then combine the two. So we get something like this. One little thing that could be a bit challenging is if you're using your left hand uh, on the cymbal you need to play the bass. The coordination there can feel a little bit tricky if you've not done much of that before, in which case you can sort of retreat from the whole thing and spend a little bit of time just getting yourself used to the left hand right foot combination. Just do that slowly and steadily and, and develop that a little bit. But if, if that's sounding okay, you can keep going. So now we've developed the ability to play accents on the snare drum. We're making it up as we go along, we're improvising. We can then add accents on the toms and we can add accents on the cymbals. So we're ready to then get stuck in and noodle about. And uh, at first, you wanna make it as random as possible. Try not to think too much about uh, anything, Just get your hands used to moving around. Uh, after that, you can start thinking a bit more about playing rhythmically by counting uh, or putting a metronome on can be a good idea. Or oh, just to make life easy, I'm gonna 
tap my left foot on one, two, three, four to give me uh, sort of some quarter notes to guide me in my structure. But I'm just going to fiddle around and see what happens. Let's have a go. the tricky bit when you're working on improvising stuff is not to judge yourself too much or well, don't judge yourself at all just noodle about just enjoy yourself just have some fun and see what happens the longer you do it uh, the more likely it is that you'll start hearing little patterns that you like and you might decide to start repeating something you've made a little combination that sounds good to you as you go Ooh, that sounds nice repeat the pattern repeat it as many times as you like Repeat it until you feel a bit bored or try and vary that pattern by accenting slightly differently but keeping the same rhythm or um, following a certain pattern of accents around the drums but changing the rhythms that you play uh, with that pattern. Uh, anything is possible really. You're trying to develop the ability to just feel free and relaxed making stuff up. For the final part of this process we're going to put this improvisation, put this noodling into the kind of context that applies when we're playing the drums in a band setting, when we're making music with other people and uh, that means we're going to use some improvised accent patterns as fills and then we're going to use them as solos. And uh, soloing is something that's not everybody's cup of tea and especially when you're at the early stages of learning this instrument it can feel a little bit daunting. Uh, to be honest I'm not that keen on playing solos myself um, but there are lots of situations where you're playing uh, with a band or whatever and the guitarist will turn around and go after their solo telling you to, to do a solo and you have to comply, you just have to go for it and um, it's cool uh, but it does help to sort of be a little bit prepared so some people like having ready-made solos that they pull out when they need to um, I don't know, I just make stuff up as I go along and so this improvisational exercise is particularly good for at least introducing the idea of playing a solo. But let's look at the fill option first. Uh, in the spirit of keeping things nice and simple we're going to start off just playing one bar of whatever groove or beat you want to play uh, and then I'm going to do the accent exercise uh, and again improvise. I'm just going to make up uh, as I go a few fills and I'm going to play a whole bar of groove and a whole bar of fill, not thinking about what I'm going to do. So far so good, spend some time until you feel comfortable doing that um, and the next step is to play three bars of groove and one bar of fill which starts to sound a bit more like the kind of thing you're actually going to do in a song. You do one bar of groove and one bar of fill to start with just to give you that greater density of the fill element but please don't play like that when you're playing with your band. Uh, there's very few situations where you want to play a fill every bar but now you're going to play three bars of groove one bar of fill, again you're just making it up as you go along, so the idea is to repeat this process for as much as you like uh, to start getting some more sort of coherent sounding fills. Here we go.
And once you're done with that bit, put some music on and start improvising fills along to whichever your favorite songs. Um, maybe pick some things that are again, sort of, sort of slow and relatively easy to play so that you can just focus on getting yourself relaxed while you practice this idea. Finally, as I said, we're gonna use this idea to explore soloing. And uh, we're gonna start off just playing two bars of groove and then doing the improvisation exercise for two bars as well. And that is a very short little solo effectively. Um, after that, we're going to do four bars of groove and four bars of solo. And that allows you to start developing melodic ideas a little bit more. Uh, I won't bore you with it myself, but after that you could do, I don't know, say four bars of groove and eight bars of solo or eight bars of groove and eight bars of solo. But when we play um, two bars and two bars, that might be called trading twos in some areas. And when we play four bars and four bars, it's trading fours. That's quite a common thing to do in a jazz setting. But we're in a rock setting at the moment and that's how I'm going to play just eighth note beat for two bars, two bars of improvisation. Okay, keeping it with sixteenths, keeping it as simple as I can, I guess, letting the ideas come. So just the last little thing to bore you with, four bars of groove, four bars of solo. Let's see what happens. And that's that, a little introduction to developing your improvisational skills on the drums. Um, I'm going to make another video as well, showing you how to use an improvisational approach to developing your groove patterns as well. Uh, again, targeted at the beginners among you. Um, but I hope you found this video useful and I hope you, you go away and try following this procedure. Again, starting with the simple steps always. If you find the simple bits easy, then just go to the next step and so on until you can sit and improvise these accent patterns around the kit. And obviously you can extrapolate from this idea lots of different things that you could do. Uh, otherwise, hopefully I'll make my contribution and add to that with some different uh, videos over time. And that'll be that for today. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. Please let me know in the comments what you thought. I'm open to suggestions for stuff you'd like me to cover in future videos. And um, as I said at the beginning, I am available to teach. So if you think I could help you in some way directly with your drumming, check out my contact details in the description below. And uh, that'll do for now. Now, why don't you go away and practice?